Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 85 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, last time we were talking about uh, virtual friends and, and interesting visual friends. I have an interesting visual friend who's also an interesting verbal friend, uh, a writer and photographer named David Quigg, somebody that I know through the podcast here, but somebody I've also met in the real world. A great guy and a really interesting photographer. I'll put links to some of his writing and his photographs in the cameraposition.com blog page. Uh, but uh, he wrote to me in November, <laughs> just catching up with this email from November 2009 here in uh, February 2010. But uh, he wrote to me in November and he said, Hey, Jeff, someone I follow online just linked to an interview with Alex Soth. He gets into territory that might be useful for the podcast you're planning. And then he quotes Soth from this interview, and I'll, I'll link to the interview. It's uh, on the blog Big Red and Shiny, uh, so I'll, I'll link to that on the cameraposition.com blog page too. But here's the quotation from Soth that caused David to send it to me. In a world where the two billionth photograph has been uploaded to Flickr, which looks like an Eggleston picture, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with making photographs with the tens of thousands of photographs being uploaded to Facebook every second? How do you manage that? How do you contribute to that? What's the point? It's a real struggle. And of course, one thing that Soth is saying here is that he's saying that some of these pictures that are online are so good that they are uh, photographs that could be made by William Eggleston, the great uh, color photographer. Uh, so here he is sort of suggesting that not only are there a lot of them, but the quality is awfully good as well. Well, I pulled this uh, email out today to talk about it because here we are, you know, I've been suggesting that one of the things that we ought to do is connect up with each other online and post pictures online. And, you know, here uh, uh, we've got uh, Alex Soth, contemporary photographer, talking about the struggle of making original photographs when there are so many photographs out there, you know, billions and billions of photographs. And in fact, uh, I heard Alex Soth talk at a... Uh, the Midwest Society for Photographic Education conference back in the fall. And uh, one of the statistics that he provided during his great talk was uh, that every one second, 500,000 new photographs are uploaded to Facebook. So every two seconds, there's a million new photographs up on Facebook. Uh, that's a little intimidating for any photographer, I think. A little intimidating for us relative to uh, trying to make something new, trying to make something original. And, you know, here is Soth kind of saying that, golly, this is a tough thing for him to do too. Um, and uh, uh, David goes on, David Quigg, the guy who sent me this uh, this little snippet from this interview, goes on to say, Soth, I think, eventually gets around to answering his own rhetorical questions like this. And this is uh, quoting Alex Soth now. I feel like I'm coming full circle, back to where it's all about process. The answer that I'm slowly working on, to the two billion pictures on my back thing, is getting rid of the picture. It's just this thing about the process. The art is the process. It's another answer for those experiences about being out in the world versus the object itself. And one of the things that I think about when I think about this problem, this problem of the fact that we are in this digital age, an age where there are a million new images every second uploaded to a single popular uh, social networking site, which of course suggests that there are many, many more than that once you add up all the other social networking sites that are out there and all the cell phone cameras that are out there. And granted, uh, I think that an awful lot of those pictures are not necessarily pictures that have the intentionality that a photographer might give them, but some of them do. And in fact, uh, I've seen an awful lot of great pictures made with cell phone cameras. So uh, we have to kind of, I think, cope with this problem or at least deal with it in some way to try and think of how we approach photography from the point of view of a photographer working in an era when there are so many photographs being made. And for me, I think I will go back to one of my teachers, one of my mentors, a uh, photographer named Neil Rappaport, longtime listeners to the podcast will remember me discussing Neil Rappaport at some previous time. And Neil's strategy about this was saturate yourself with photography, saturate yourself with every photograph that's ever been made. Look at every picture that ever has been made and see if you can find 
a way to internalize all of those pictures so that when you finally come upon a scene that you see and want to record for your own self, that you can't tell whether it's a photograph that Ansel Adams made or Alex Soth made or, uh, you know, you name it, any other photographer could have made. And so instead of trying to make that picture that you've seen before, you end up not really knowing which picture you might have seen before and you make your own photograph. So in fact, I think that while it seems sort of daunting that we are in this era with uh, so many photographs and so many pictures that we have to cope with every day, um, and in, in fact, it really is not as daunting a process as all of that. In fact, we are living in this wonderfully rich visual age, a rich visual age that is so full of great imagery, great imagery that tells us about the way the world looks and informs us about the way we'd like to see the world. And uh, thinking about the way we'd like to see the world is, in fact, I think the way to kind of circumvent the problem of trying to deal with all of this inundation of information that we have uh, surrounding us visually. So, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'll link out to uh, Alex Soth's uh, website too. Great photographer. I've mentioned him before on camera position as well. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, that whole idea of photography being the journey, making photographs simply for the sake of seeing the world, placing yourself into the world, as Soth says, and uh, thinking about the way to circumvent the problem of that, what uh, Soth kind of refers to as a monkey on his back of the two billion pictures that are out there. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Camera Position. We've got some fun things to look forward to in upcoming episodes. We've got the Desert Island Photograph uh, episode, and uh, I may actually break that up into two. I got enough responses from people that... uh, uh, for their what what photograph would they bring with them on a desert island some really great responses some very interesting responses as well uh, so we'll uh, share those in an upcoming episode and uh, we'll uh, take a look at some other ideas that i have queued up and again just a reminder i am uh, now taking reservations for the uh, italy photography workshops we've just got a few spaces left in both the rome and the tuscany workshops so if you're interested in attending um, stop by photographitaly.com and take a look at the uh, agenda and i think you'll find uh, that it's uh, a pretty exciting one so we'll see you next time on the next episode of camera position the podcast about the creative side of photography camera position is a proud member of the photocast network your photo resource in the potosphere photocastnetwork.com